Hello guys, welcome to Nadi Tech. Today on Tech Review, we will be looking at the Samsung Galaxy A50, the new budget smartphone to beat. At this point, everyone is at least aware of Samsung's flagship Galaxy S phones, like the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the S10 Plus. However, as soon as you look beyond those for something even more affordable, Samsung's portfolio gets messy really quick. Between Samsung's various budget and mid-range offerings, there are, a, there are a dizzy number of phones that all kinds of seems the same. To make things even more confusing, depending on what carrier you are on, the same phone might have two different names, as we see with T-Mobile Galaxy J7 Star and Verizon Galaxy J7 V, second generation. With $350 Galaxy A50, Samsung is clearing out the clutter and going after some of the best budget and mid-range handsets on the market. With a retail price of $350, the Galaxy A50 slots neatly between the $300 Moto G7 and the $400 Pixel 3a. It also incorporates a couple of features that the other two don't have, like dual rear cameras and an in-display fingerprint reader. From the outside, the Galaxy A50 looks quite similar to the Moto G7. Both phones have selfie cameras that sit on the central notch that dips into their screen. The Galaxy A50 is big, mostly bezel-less displays and smooth rounded backs. However, when you look closer, you begin to notice that everything looks and feels a bit more polished on the Galaxy A50 than the Moto G7. The Galaxy A50's bezels are slimmer, its chin is smaller, and despite being practically the same size, Samsung crammed a 6.4 inch 2340 by 1080 OLED screen onto the Galaxy A50. Why the Moto G7 has to make do with a 6.2 inch screen 2270 by 1080 LCD? So not only is the Galaxy A50 screen bigger, it's brighter and more colorful too. Both phones come with headphone jack and micro SD card slots for expandable storage. But in the back, the Galaxy A50 features a 25 megapixel primary camera along with an 8 megapixel 123 degrees wide angle camera and a bonus 5 megapixel depth sensing camera to help with portrait style shots that's a nice improvement over the single cams found on pretty much every other phones in the price range and why the galaxy a50's back is plastic instead of glass like you get on the moto g7 samsung officially calls that material plastic no kidding yeah and it's damn hard to tell the difference. In terms of photography, the Galaxy A50 consistently topped the G7 too, thanks to generally better sharpness, color saturation, and particularly low light performance. Really, in almost every way, the Galaxy A50 is just a better device than the Moto G7. However, when put up against the Pixel 3a, the Galaxy A50 falls short. Even though it has one less camera in the back, the Pixel 3a's photo quality is way better, producing shots with better details and clarity than any other phone in this price range. Take for example, a shot of some flowers taken by both phones. While the Galaxy A50's shot is bright and vivid, its color saturation overwhelms details like the wrinkles on the flower's petals. And in low light, the Pixel 3a delivers better sensitivity, resulting in a brighter, well-exposed picture. 
because the A50 doesn't have a dedicated night mode. Turning on the Pixel 3a's night sight makes the gap in image quality between the two phones even more extreme. In a similar story from performance, where on benchmark like the Geekbench 4 3D Mark, the Galaxy A50 and Moto G7 turns in comparable results. The Galaxy A50 edge out the Moto G7, which echoes real-world performance where the G7 suffers from more lag and UI stutter than the Galaxy A50. The Pixel 3a, however, is the smoothest of the bunch thanks to its Snapdragon 670 chip. It scores significantly better in 3D Max Slingshot Unlimited test, which is 50% higher than the Galaxy A50 score. And when it comes to battery life, with a time of 12 hours and 17 minutes on our video rundown test, the Galaxy A50's 4000mAh battery absolutely crushed the G7 Seven's mark of nine minutes twenty nine of nine hours twenty nine seconds. Meanwhile, the Pixel Three A fared just barely worse at eleven minutes fifty one seconds. While the larger Pixel Three A XL was a tiny bit better with a time of twelve minutes forty three twelve hours forty three minutes. This hierarchy, this hierarchy even extends to features like the speaker on each phone this hierarchy even extends to features like the speakers on each phone because while the Moto G7 and Galaxy A50 have mono speakers the Pixel 3a offers two true stereo sound though I should point out that unlike the other two the Pixel 3a doesn't have an SD card slot for expandable memory. The A50's only real issue is its in-display fingerprint sensor. I want to give Samsung credit for putting such a techy feature on a budget device, but in my experience, using it can be a bit hit or miss. Typically, it had no issue reading my digits. But occasionally, it took three or four taps to unlock the phone. And even after re-registering my prints multiple times, I couldn't fix the issue. The most important factor in determining which one of these devices to buy is price. The $350 Galaxy A50 is better in practically every way than the $300 Moto G7. But it costs $50 more. Then there then there's the Pixel 3a at $400. It's more of a mid-range device. On the other hand, it has stereo speaker. On the other hand, it has stereo speakers, superior performance, and the best camera of the lot. Though if you can find deals like this, though if you can find great deals for the Samsung Galaxy A50 like the $280 deal on B&H. Samsung's new budget handset is an easy pick. But more importantly, it seems like Samsung is putting more effort into its affordable phones. With the price of modern flagship phones pushing higher into the $1,000 and more region, increased competition in the budget and mid-range segment is something to look out for. For the Samsung Galaxy A50, no form of water resistance is a bit of a bumper. No form of water resistance on the Samsung Galaxy A50 is a bit of a bummer. And it is the one small advantage the Moto G7 has over the Galaxy A50. The Galaxy A50 is available from carriers including Sprint, Verizon and Xfinity Mobile. But if you get an unlocked one, it will work on GSM carriers like AT&T and T-Mobile. While the Galaxy A50 has three cameras on the back, only two of those are functional.
as the third is reserved for depth sensing and portrait effects. The Galaxy A50 is currently the cheapest phone in the United States with an in-display fingerprint sensor. The Galaxy A50 is currently the cheapest phone in the United States with an in-display fingerprint sensor. The Galaxy A50 is currently the cheapest phone in the United States with an in-display fingerprint sensor. Sadly, that sensor can be somewhat temperamental.